Hi, it's Hazel. Thank you for joining me here at my channel today. I believe that it is day 12 in the 100 day challenge. I will remind you that I don't know how to edit videos and my iPhone does not allow me to pause. So that means that I do have to do a fair bit of prep uh, before turning the camera on so that you actually have something to look at. So basically what I thought we would do today is kind of decorate this cover. So the other day I bound this three, uh, three signature journal. I'll just open it up. Whoa, I'm sorry. Um, I used packaging. Uh, in places I think you can almost still see what's there, even though I can't, I can't read it anymore. Um, and I used, to cover the, the packaging, I used this paper that my mother's day, no, birthday flowers were wrapped in. And you can see here that there is a boo-boo. You know when they wrap flowers, how they staple and tape and staple and tape. Well, that's kind of a threadbare spot there, but I thought, you know, big deal. I can cover it. Now, if there weren't script on here that I wanted to keep right side up, it would have been simpler, obviously, to have the damaged part on the front cover because that's where the bulk of the decoration is going to go. But not to be. Um, these signatures look pretty well perfect, so... Initially, I was wondering whether I'd be having to cover the spine, you know, help reinforce it. It's only packaging and so on. So basically what I thought I would do today is show you some of the options that I have considered and rejected and kind of what I intended to go ahead with. Now, you probably, well, if you if you thrift as much as I do, you probably have your own, <clears throat> excuse me, oh, this is, this is the band-aid I intended to put over here. It's so hard on this to tell which is the right side, but I guess if I'm looking for it and can't tell, then the casual observer won't be able to tell either. Anyway, I have a lot of linen-y type things, doilies, that um, could be used to, you know, cover the boo-boo, provide some decoration on the front, cover the spine. Uh, again, I'm saying that, you know, the spine it doesn't need disguising because it is nice. That, this piece that I've laid out and then moved is obviously too big. I then also had some doilies, you know, fabric center crocheted around the edge. This is not big enough to cover that area. So that kind of goes off to the side. Smaller ones. Now, <clears throat> I could, I suppose, you know, put something on the cover, worry about the back. Don't know. I thought, to be honest, when I turned the camera on, I thought I had a solution, but now I'm not so sure. I also thrifted, and I don't know why these why this looks so creased, because I did iron it. But it's it's these pieces that have some embroidery on them uh, at, at both ends, they're oval, so that's a good shape for, uh, I mean a good format for this, um, this book, which is I think smaller, well I know it is smaller than the typical. So it's only, the cover is only eight inches and I think, well, that's five, and well, that's pretty close to six. Anyway, so the oval uh, works quite well here, but it doesn't kind of go with what I originally planned. This size perhaps is a possibility. I'll show you what I really thought I was going to do. I... Um, well, I don't have one here to show you, but I bought a bunch, let me like 500, a box of six by six envelopes. Uh, white, this is sort of what the back side looks like. 
I'd taken it apart. Anyway, I thought, well, okay, why can't I turn that into a pocket? So I folded down the flap and glued it here. I kind of have these little, well, it's not so much a gusset as just this little thing that gives you a slightly more, slightly more storage space in the pocket. I found some yellow paper and it doesn't, I don't know how it looks on camera, but it's, <clears throat> excuse me, it's not much fancier to be honest than construction paper or at least that's the way it looks so it's fairly um rough looking i used a floral stamp and bundled sage um ink to stamp around the edges my plan also was i fussy cut this flower and I don't know, I don't think I've ever shown you, but you know how there are those um, <clears throat> plastic containers with the cover that open up and have a million recipes? Well, there's a, a, an equivalent type thing that has these sorts of cards. And this, one, this whole box, which has probably a few hundred cards in it, um... 1978 tree communications i don't really see any other uh, identifier on here oh on the plastic box it says happy plants so it covers cacti and succulents food gardening terrariums um, garden flowers you name it they've got it so i kind of looked through some of the cards and i thought well this could work because the background of the paper is fairly white there is this blue that's adjacent, and it would be good to pick that up. Yellow and blue, and there's some green there. That obviously all works together. So, isn't that lovely? I also had, and this is the same stuff as this, this really gauzy type stuff that has... Do I have another piece here to show you? I think I had a bigger, I, I know I have another piece of this elsewhere, and it appears that this was actually, that these were actually sleeves. So I thought, well, okay. Yes, there's some embroidery on here. If I put it like so, well, actually, I thought I'd put it like so. I cover a bit of the yellow. I My picture kind of avoids most of that um, embroidery so it doesn't become too lumpy bumpy and hard to glue down because that is another consideration I've also had this piece of um, I think this might have been like a runner or something that Dollar Tree was selling a few years ago I mean that works perfectly together it's sort of that spring green kind of a color which would work fine with this so this was going to be my plan. And of course, because it's a pocket and we want it to function as such, you know, it's got to be fairly low on the on the cover. Otherwise, you know, anything you stick in there of any size would be poking out above the top of the cover. So there's that. And I also have this wider white Rick Rack. I don't know what this is, but... Um, I could clearly find a, a cleaner area that could be used. I don't know if that's overkill or not. So that was my plan. This little patch here. Whoops. Um, oh, I should also say that if you're watching these 100-day uh, videos kind of in sequence, then you would have seen the video where I was die-cutting leather. So I'm thinking, oh, wouldn't that be cute on there? There's some orange there, dragonfly flower. Like, I mean, <laughs> the woman thought this through. But is that, in fact, the best thing I could be doing here? Some of the other stuff that I gathered up, this is a more dense lace, and it's got a finished, it's got a hem there and a bit of a seam allowance there. But again, it makes it, very rough when you're putting lumpy when you're putting something above it 
I also have this, which was obviously a collar that was salvaged from something. Um, this hasn't been ironed yet, which, of course, I wouldn't use it unless I did iron it. That could have been maybe something like this. It would kill two birds. I'd have changed the edges, opened this up so the frayed edge would show and more of the embroidery. But some of that shiny white thread didn't exactly appeal to me. And again, I don't really want to cover up that spine since it's a good one. So I rejected that. And then I started thinking back to these other doilies. So... Uh, let's see. Let's see, that's the right side. I could also go with something like that. Now, that's pretty cute. Obviously, we lose the pocket, but, you know, our work is really totally never wasted because it could be used elsewhere in the journal or some other journal. It, there's nothing to say that it has to be there. So... Still have a dragonfly. Oh, and somewhere here. Oh. I also have these little fabric butterflies. Now, I think it was, well, basically in Canada, we've got Dollar Tree and Dollarama. So I don't remember which place it came from. But, I mean, there are, you know, some good colors here. The green would work. This sort of golden color would work. The purple would work. The white would work. And the reason I started, the, probably the pink would be okay too. Probably, the, I mean, not probably. The reason I started fooling around with this is because number one, I've had them too long and I don't think I've used a single one. And number two, it would allow me to, and there are a couple of sizes in here. And I don't, let me just dump everything out. Looking for a small yellow one. Okay. Um, so, assuming that I put that little thing there, you know, again, it's it's kind of all by itself. So if a person had a couple of butterflies, wouldn't it almost seem as though, oh, it wasn't an afterthought. It wasn't, it's actually a design element. It's not just uh, something that, you know, kind of fell out of the sky and landed there. So that's why I was considering butterflies. And of course, if we have some on the back, it for consistency and continuity and to tie things together, it would be a good idea to have some on the front as well. <clears throat> so, I don't know. I guess the... <laughs> did I call you here <laughs> just to tell you that I don't know what I'm doing? Um... I honestly almost think that I prefer this. Well, let me show you one more option. This is nice. The, the proportions are right. I could just forget the pocket and use this by itself. This is kind of, like I say, gauzy and it, you know, irregular. So that's a little more interesting, perhaps. It wouldn't be too too bad to glue down because you know basically I can almost avoid the embroidery except for that one I don't know I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't put them in opposite corners because that looks kind of goofy. Let's put a little baby one here too.
Now that dragonfly seems out of place. probably cut this yeah that's a finished edge there I'd cut that off so it looks a little more ratty I'd probably shorten it so it's not sticking out both ends or I would go like so make it asymmetric that looks good I really think that, that I tend to, and this is just a, an observation, and maybe it's not even totally accurate. It's just, it just is kind of dawning on me that it seems to me that I prefer simpler, cleaner. It almost seems like if I use the dragonfly, it should be on a surface where it will get noticed. It, it's kind of lost there among the... Now the purple and yellow looks a little disconnected. The white would be lost on there, unless I maybe add three. Let's see if I can find another little yellow one. could have this guy off the off the fabric again to make the eye kind of move hmm I think that we don't have all day so and it's only one cover on one journal and it's not rocket science, so I'm making a decision. I'm going with this, which kind of surprises me because <laughs> it's not originally what I planned, but hey, I'm flexible if nothing else. So uh, I'll let this guy lie down and start flowing. I'll just double check this. Um, maybe I'll have I'll position it like that. I suppose I could. That might not be have enough oomph. I was going to say I could I could use just a glue stick, but. That's probably not very, very wise because it will be subjected to some wear and tear. While this glue is um, trying to get going here, I just want to say that on the day that I'm taping this, <clears throat> it's been it's been an interesting day. I got in my head a couple days ago that I want to rearrange my studio space. So that is, uh, and I'm not talking, you know, move paper from here to there and move something else from there to there. I'm talking the big stuff, like the furniture sized pieces. I also had a sizal uh, area rug on the floor. I have um, laminate, like, uh, is it, I guess vinyl laminate. So it's, you know, waterproof and really tough on the floor, but then this sizal <clears throat> area rug was on top of it. But of course, and that was long before I realized I was going to be doing this, this stuff. 
that stuff is just a magnet for thread and bits of paper and it always seemed like it was dirty. So I chose to, and it also seemed that it was stretching over time. So it had been anchored down by this uh, credenza that I have in the, uh, in the office here by this really heavy desk and a couple of other key pieces of furniture. So theoretically, it shouldn't have been moving or going anywhere, but it was. So it seemed like probably got my money's work, worth out of it and it was not serving me. Boy, this thing is kind of plugged here. that it would be okay to, you know, vacuum it, roll it up, and move it elsewhere in the house or, or whatever. And um, so there are several pieces that are kind of too heavy for me to move by myself. And hubby wasn't exactly free today. Anyway, long story short, I did as much as I could by myself, which was... I think quite a bit, to be honest. And um, the rest will probably wait for a few days. But I'm a pretty impatient person. When I want, when I get an idea and I want to act on it, you know, it kind of, it's like now. So I'm trying to get a little smarter as I get older. Because um, I know I've almost killed myself in the process a few times, you know, where, okay, woman, ask for help, and then you don't, you know, hurt your back or whatever. That's kind of a hard lesson to learn, to be honest. Anyway, I, uh, okay, so that was how part of the day went. And then it was also the day that the regimental funeral for two fallen RCMP, not RCMP, police officers, was being televised live. So I tuned into that. And of course, you know, policing is a paramilitary kind of thing. So there's a lot of pomp and ceremony and marching and somebody barking out orders and all of that. And it, because it was a double funeral, it was also, you know, probably twice as long, because twice as many eulogies and, and so on. And of course, that was a very somber and sad thing, because these two men were young, uh, 25 and, thir no, 30, 35 and 30, I think. And they had responded, kind of, you know, one of those domestic things, middle of the night. And um, unfortunately lost their lives in the process. Uh, one of them you know, was an expectant father too. So, you know, that really tugs at the heartstrings because then you your picture, you, you, you look ahead and you think, oh, there's some baby yet to be born um, who never will have known his or her father. So, and then of course, you know, there are the bagpipes and the, somebody playing the last post on the bugle and, and Amazing Grace and so on. Like it's, it was, it was kind of hard to hard, but it's one of those things I also think that a person should force themselves to, to watch and to, and to, um, go, feel the feelings and go through the thought process that should accompany a devastating thing like that. Apparently from some of the speeches that were weak, some of the speeches that were made, where are my baby wipes, where are my baby wipes? Um, oh, 
I want a good old finger. From some of the speeches, a couple of different people referenced the fact that this nationally, this would have been, now one person says seven, the other person said eight. So it's either the seventh or eighth um, police officer deaths in Canada this so far this year. So, you know, it, it, it happens like that's too many. That's seven or eight too many. <clears throat> and, of course, this was a day for, um, you know, honoring these men's lives and, and uh, recognizing their contribution and their sacrifice and all of that. So it wasn't a, a, a political day or a a lobbying kind of day, but, you know, it's pretty clear that there are some societal things that need to be addressed. It's not a rational act. It's not like somebody wakes up in the morning and says, today I'm going to ruin, today I'm going to take two lives and ruin countless others. It's, I don't know, it, it's complex and obviously not the, the subject of today's video, but I don't know, it just seems like something needs to happen. Okay, I said I'd cut this, oh, see, see, by the time, by the time I glue this down, there might not be much of it left because it's fraying as we speak. Okay, I said I wanted to have it more asymmetric, so I'll pull it over to the side. I will, it's not a pocket, so I don't have to worry about really where I'm putting my flower image. So I'm about three quarters of an inch from there and about an inch and a half from there. So as long as I can remember that for the next 30 seconds, I should be able to get this down where I want it. So yeah, because I had the TV on for those two, two and a half hours or whatever it was, I couldn't video. So I'm kind of, it's kind of like supper time now when I'm doing this. So I hope the light is okay for you. Okay, three quarters of an inch that away and one and a half up. Now I might choose later on, who knows, to what I want to add a label or maybe not. You know, it is possible to do a journal project without a label. Just saying. Okay, I think I'll put that about there. I'll use Fabri-Tac again. Just because of the holding power. And then I'll glue down those other... Um, my last few pieces. And I will be able to let you go. And you'll be able to go. Do your own 100-day project. So I guess the, the takeaway that I'm getting from today's uh, video is that we need to, we can, you know, it's obviously it's good to think ahead and have a plan, but I think we also should stay open to the universe, to, um, you know, a, a bit of, well, let me hold this up and make sure it's straight. No, it wasn't. Um, it, it, you know, to hold, to stay open to possibilities that exist, uh, not beat ourselves up if we change our mind because presumably we're changing it to something better than we originally thought. 
and batter is good. Batter is always good. Yeah, I think I like it at this corner, so I'm going to put the butterfly there. I think I need to top this bottle off a bit because when it is fuller, I could also thin it a bit with... Um, What is it that I thin it with? I'd have to look at the bottle. Some kind of stinky stuff. Okay, so that's cool. Now what are we doing with the dragonfly? I think for that, because it's kind of fine, I should use um, hard glitter glue. I think I kind of had it on there, did I not? I can see that, again, because of the you know, the fact that this fabric is not entirely I might have to Where's my spatula? I think I better squirt a little because I don't like that I could see a space there. So I probably didn't get the the fabric tack close enough to the edge. You know you got close enough to the edge when it squeezes out. <laughs> and looks like could use a was that commercial was it uh, brill cream or something a little dab will do you well a little dab of art glitter glue will do you too in a case like this well that one seems good that side seems good Okay, I've got a dragonfly to position. I'll just put this here till I figure out exactly where. Hmm. Now that makes me feel like uh, that makes me feel. I'm going to be annoyed if I can't use this. Or does he need to be? I kind of hate when they're upside down, though. Although, certainly they can fly however they want. That looks kind of lopsided to me. See, I don't mind that this isn't attached. Well, maybe I should put a bit down that. Didn't really want it lifting that much. But I kind of like that it's kind of lifting in places because then it looks like it's got some dimension. Okay, or did I have... Or do I do a cluster of insects down here? And I need a little baby white butterfly. There is such a thing. I 
course, it'll be the last thing that falls out of the bag. You know, I'm beginning to think that I'm trying to force this when it doesn't really, when it's not really right. This guy probably should have been over here. Is it going to ruin the paper? No. <laughs> I love you, Fabertag. I think I can live with that. Let's get some of this glue off my fingers and off this guy. Okay, so if I put that there, how are we looking for? see what's happening um okay if i put that there <clears throat> and there and there yes oh. <laughs> maybe i should try this glue <clears throat> and see what happens If I had to rip it up again, it would be less forgiving, I'll tell you that much. I'd be fussy cut. I mean, I'd be looking for a new flower image because the paper will have been ruined. Okie dokie. Did you guys watch my Sunday video on what's on my bookcase? The um, the the category this week was sewing books, sewing and needle craft and that sort of thing. So if that cranks, turns your crank, then you might be interested in watching that. Let me just... See, that kind of annoys me. That's a bit of... Okay, better. Now I better give these guys another little dabble, do you? Okay, and hopefully this will work on this leather because this is very fine.
My goodness, that clock is ticking loudly. Hopefully you can't hear it. This leather is so soft. It doesn't have much body to it. So it's kind of drooping here as I'm trying to glue this. <laughs> Let's hope there's a, as at least as much glue on the leather as there is on my fingers. Okay. remember which way I had him was it like pff, it's smeared glue all over everywhere why don't we oh brother that wasn't the smoothest execution I've ever seen or done <laughs> After this dries, I'll poke away at some of this that has uh, I'm happy I persevered to the point where the, butter, the dragonfly fits in. Let me lift this up and see how she looks. Yes, I'm happy. And if I choose at some point to add a, um, a label, I will. I think I'm going to call it a day. I like it. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Anyway, I think it's day 12. Thank you for joining me. I will be back again here tomorrow. So I hope you join me then. Thanks. Bye.